Hello and welcome to video three for week four. In the previous video, I talked about the theory of the row reduction algorithm, what we're trying to accomplish, translating systems into matrices, row reducing, trying to get reduced row echelon form. A lot of that probably felt pretty confusing. Let's do a bunch of examples to try and make it clear. This is an algorithm that's much easier to see in examples. Here's a system of equations that I can translate into a matrix. So I take all the coefficients, there's no y in the first row, so I get a zero for the y, other coefficients are one and one. Second row is three, negative one, two, get my second row. There's no z in the third row, I get a zero coefficient there. Other than that, I get a one, negative five, those show up here. These coefficients come down in the constants. The separating line in the matrix represents the equal sign. This is the x column, this is the y column, this is the z column. That's all of our translation and setup for what the matrix does to represent a system. Right, let me erase this a little bit um, and talk about our first step here. Re trying to do the row reduction algorithm, I want to look for leading ones and then I want to clear their columns. This is nice because I already have a leading one in the first row. I want to clear the columns. This zero is fine. This three is the thing I want to get rid of. How do I get rid of that three? Well, I can take the first row, I can multiply it by three, and I can subtract that from the second row. I'm allowed to multiply by constants, and I'm allowed to add and subtract rows from each other. So I can take three times the first row, subtract that from the second row. That's gonna get three minus three here, so this three is gonna go away. Negative one minus three times zero is gonna be negative one. Two minus three times one is gonna be negative one. Zero minus three times four is gonna be negative 12. And there it is. And now this column is finished. I've cleared everything under my leading one. That's what I want to do as soon as I get a leading one. Now I move on to try and produce another leading one. And I already have one in my third row. Now I'm going to interchange the second and third row because I'd like to sort of have my leading one start from the top of the matrix. And that's mostly convention, but I'll do it anyway. So interchange the second and third row. Then I've got a leading one. Above it is already zero, that's good. I wanna clear this zero below it. So I'm gonna add the second row to the third row. Because negative one plus one is gonna give me zero. Negative one plus negative five is gonna be negative six. Negative 12 plus negative three is gonna give me negative 15. And this is the third row that I produce. And now both of these columns are good. I have leading ones and above and below them I have all zeros. Now I wanna get a leading one in the third row. The only way I can do that is to divide this by negative six. So I divide the entire third row by negative six. Negative 15 over negative six is the same as five halves. So I get this third row. Now the third row has a leading one and I wanna clear the column. Well, I've gotta clear both of these. I'm gonna do them one at a time. So the first thing I'll do is I'll clear this one. And I can do that just by subtracting the third row from the first row. Subtracting these zeros doesn't do anything. Subtracting one is gonna clear that one. 4 minus 5 halves, 4 is the same thing as 8 halves, minus 5 halves is going to give me 3 halves. So I've got that 0 that I wanted, and I get 3 halves in the constant. Then I need to clear this negative 5. Well, I can add 5 times the first row and add that to the second row. And that's going to clear this 5, and this is going to be negative 3 plus 5 times 5 halves, which is going to give me 19 halves. And now I'm done. Now I've got my leading ones, and each leading one is in a column where everything else is zeros. This is reduced row echelon form. And this is a form I can just read off the solution. This says x plus no y's plus no z's is three halves. This says y is 19 halves. And this says z is five halves. And that's what reduced row echelon form it gets us, does it gets us to a matrix that we can interpret in terms of what the solution is. In this case, the system is solved by these coordinates. Let me do another example. So here's another system in three variables that I can translate. Uh, two, one, negative three, those show up here. There's no y in the second equation, so I get a zero y there. Otherwise, I get four and one show up there. Negative three, negative three, positive two show up there. These constants come down there. The vertical line represents the equal sign. All of these things are good. I want to get a leading one. None of my rows start with leading one, so I have to make one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the first row 
and divide it by 2 because that will take this divided by 2 and give me leading 1. I'm not going to show all the arithmetic steps in this example just because it gets a bit laborious, but dividing all those things in the first row by 2 gives me this arithmetic. I get 1 half, negative 3 halves, and 1 half. And now I need to clear the column that has the leading 1. This is a 4, so I can times this by 4 and subtract it from the second row. So that's going to give me 4 minus 4 here. That's going to go away. So this is going to be 0 minus 4 of those, 1 minus 4 of those, 7 minus 4 of those, subtracting 4 times the first row from the second. That arithmetic gives me these numbers. And here I have a negative 3 I want to clear, so I can multiply the first row by 3 and add it to the third row, because that's going to give me negative 3 plus 3, clear that first entry I want to clear. So that's going to be negative 3 plus 3 of those, 2 plus 3 of those, and 0 plus 3 of those. That arithmetic gives me these numbers, and now the first column is complete. I have a leading 1, I have zeros below it, I can move on. I'll look at my second and third rows. Neither of them have leading 1s, but I can divide the second row by negative 2 to get a leading 1. That's going to be, also give me 7 and 5 divided by negative 2. That arithmetic gives me negative 7 over 2 and negative 5 over 2. So I have my leading 1 here. So now I want to clear above and below it. I'll start with above. The 1 half here, so I can multiply this by 1 half and subtract it from this row. So that's going to have 1 half minus 1 half. It's going to have a 0 above. Now the fraction arithmetic gets a bit annoying, but that's what happens with these algorithms. The fraction arithmetic just does get annoying. This term is going to be 3 halves minus uh, 1 half times negative 7 halves. This is going to be 1 half minus 1 half times negative 5 halves. That arithmetic is going to give me these numbers, 1 quarter and 7 quarters in the, in the first row. Then I want to clear what's below the leading one. So if I multiply this by 3 halves and add it, it's going to give me negative 3 halves plus positive 3 halves. That's going to clear that. So this is going to be negative 5 halves plus 3 halves times negative 7 halves. That's what, what's going to happen here. This is going to be 3 halves plus 3 halves times negative 5 halves. That's what's going to happen here. If you do that arithmetic, you'll get the numbers you get down here, negative 31 over 4 and negative 9 over 4. But now I finish this column. So now I have a leading one here, and its column is all zeros. I have a leading one here, its column is all zeros. I want to see if I can get a leading one here. And the only way I can do this is to divide by negative 31 over 4, or equivalently multiply by negative 4 over 31. That's going to cancel this off and give me 1 here. Here the 4s are going to cancel, and negatives are going to cancel. I'm going to get 9 over 31. So that gives me a leading one here. Now I want to clear what's above it. Let me start with the 1 quarter. So if I multiply this by 1 quarter and subtract it from here, I'm going to get 1 quarter minus 1 quarter. These zeros, of course, have no effect. This is going to be 7 quarters um, minus 1 quarter times 9 over 31, which is annoying fraction arithmetic. But what you get out of it is 52 over 31. And likewise, I can multiply this by 7 halves and subtract it from that so that I get 7, or sorry, add it to that so I get 7 halves, negative 7 halves plus 7 halves. So I can get 0 here. And then this term is going to be 7 halves plus, or 5 halves plus 7 halves times 9 over 31. Annoying arithmetic. It gives me negative 46 over 31. And this is done. Now I have these leading ones. They are in columns of all zeros. And I can read off the solution. This row says that x has to be 52 over 31. This row says y has to be negative 46 over 31. This row says z has to be 9 over 31. And that's what the row reduction algorithm does, is just by using this method, finding leading ones, clearing them, it turns the matrix into something where we can read off the solutions. It's algorithmic. It keeps track of all the information. These basic operations will solve any linear system we throw at it. Let me do one more example. I'll go a little bit more quickly through this example. 
uh, not talk quite as much about the arithmetic, but still talk about what I'm doing. So translate this, here's the translation. I have a leading one in the second row, so let me interchange the first and second rows to put that leading one at the top. I wanna clear this two, so let me multiply this by two and subtract it from the second row. That arithmetic gives me these numbers. I wanna clear this five, so let me multiply this row by five and subtract it from the third row. That gives me these numbers. And immediately I notice something, because I have the same rows here, which is interesting. I'm allowed to add and subtract one row from the other, so I can subtract row two from row three and entirely get rid of row three. And having a row of all zeros is perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with that. We want each, non each row with a non-zero entry to start with the leading one, but a row of all zeros is fine. We don't need every row to start with the leading one. We're allowed to have a row of all zeros. This row, however, the second row, should have a leading one, so let me divide by negative 14 gives me those numbers, and then I want to clear this, so let me multiply this by four and subtract it from the first row. That gives me these numbers. And here I have to stop. This is reduced row echelon form. Each row has its first non-zero entry is a, is a leading one. This row doesn't have any non-zero entries, so that's fine. And each leading one is in a column where all the other entries are zeros. The fact that we have this column here with weird numbers in it, in addition to the constants, of course, is fine. This is reduced row echelon form. And in the next video, I will talk about how to interpret these kind of matrices and talk about what that means for the solutions to the system of linear equations.